Hello all, welcome back to National IAS Academy. My name is Raj Shekhar and uh, we are here with the next 10 most important topics from UPSC Civil Services Prelim Preliminary Examination. Under this initiative, which is Focus 300 initiative, we have already covered uh, more than 280 topics and in today's class, I shall be covering next 10 most important topics from UPSC Civil Services Preliminary Examination perspective. All right, let us begin. The first topic is about uh, the recent GI tag. Recently, Mithila Makana from which state? from the state of Bihar has received geographical indication tag. So with this more than 14 products now from Bihar have this special tag that is GI, geographical indication tag, including Mithila Makan. We now have more than 14 products having G, GI tag from the state of Bihar alone. So what is this GI tag? It is a kind of security provided to various products. It might be industrial product, or it might be agricultural product or even a natural product. It forms, it, it provides a sense of security with, uh, with the validity of 10 years to a particular product hailing from a particular region. So GI tag was recently awarded to Mithila Makan, which is from the state of Bihar. And this production was given under the provisions of geographical indications of commodities, that is Registration and Protection Act of 1999. A GI tag basically is a label used to identify products with unique qualities that come from a certain geographic region, certain geographic region. Please remember these products will have unique identities or unique qualities and they hail from or they come from a particular or a unique or certain geographic region. All right. Next, no, the award of uh, awarding of GI tag provides or assists growers in obtaining the highest price for their superior goods and also provides security which is for a period of 10 years. And please remember this act of 1999 has been framed under the provisions of the WTO agreement on a trade related aspects of internet intellectual property rights which is famously called as the TRIPS agreement, TRIPS agreement, right? And if you look at various products which have received the GI tag in the year 2023, these include uh, Sivali Puttur, Palkova, Khaji Nimu, Kola Chili, Kashmir Saffron, Pondam, Mizu, uh, Puanchai, Rasgulla, Kandamal Haldi, Dindigul Logs, Kodai Kanal, Malai Pudu, Manipur Black Rice, Gulburga Turdal, Himaram, Tavla Luhan, Tirur, Beetle Leaf, Palani Panchamritam, Idu Mishmi Textiles, Kandagi Sari, Noctec Health, Kandamal Haladi. So these are the products which have received the GI tag in the year 2023. Uh, 2023. Please go through all these products and uh, make a list of these products. Next we have Nord Stream Pipeline. What is it? It is a pipeline of natural gas. Natural gas which has been you know, uh, established to ensure the supply of natural, ga natural gas from or natural gas between Germany and Russia. This pipeline has been uh, laid, laid in uh, Baltic Sea. So passing through Baltic Sea, this particular pipeline provides, uh, provides for the safe passage or uh, safe transfer of natural gas from the Germany to the Russia. That is from uh, Greifswald uh, in Germany to Viborg in Russia. It is through the Sea of Baltic. All right. Next, NATO was in news. You have studied a lot about NATO, but the recent context was Finland has been admitted as the 31st member of the NATO, that is North Atlantic Treaty Organization. All right. So North Atlantic Treaty Organization, it was established in April 1949. It was led by United States. So most famously, it is seen as a United States led institution. All right. So it has been established as per the provisions of Washington Treaty. Okay. So currently it consists of 31 members and uh, the original members of this particular group included Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Iceland, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, United Kingdom and the United States of America. The latest member was Finland which joined the group in, in the year 2023. And this is the main reason because of which uh, we, we are seeing an ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine. Ukraine in, uh, you know, expressed its intention to join this particular group and as a result, Russia declared a war on 
Ukraine on uh, 24th of February 2022. It's been more than a year now. All right. So next is about the national mission on edible oil palm. It, it was launched recently and uh, the objective is to make India self-sufficient in terms of edible oil, that is import as well as exports. So in order to boost agricultural incomes, Prime Minister recently unveiled a new national initiative that is on palm oil production. For self-sufficiency in ed edible oil, the National Edible Oil Mission Oil Palm Program will invest more than 11,000 crore over a five-year five year time period. So the objective of, basic objective of uh, this mission is to control domestic edible oil prices and also to triple current local palm oil production to 11 lakh million tons by 2025 and 2026. Also, by 2025 and 2026 and 2029 and 2030, Respectively, the area under oil palm cultivation would increase to 10 lakh and 16.7 lakh hectares. The main objective is to make India a self-reliant country in terms of edible oil production. All right. Next, we have PM Pranam, which was in news recently. It was recently launched. Pranam here stands for Pranam here stands for Promotion of Alternate Nutrients for Agriculture Management Yojana. Pranam stands for Promotion of Alternate Nutrients. For Agriculture Management Yojana. Why was it launched? It was launched to boost agricultural incomes and uh, reduce dependency on chemical fertilizers. It basically seeks to promote natural farming. The objective is to increase the balanced use of fertilizers in conjunction with the biofertilizers and organic fertilizers. In terms of numbers, the aim is to bring down the subsidy burden on chemical fertilizers, which is estimated to reach rupees 2.25 lakh crores in the year 2023, which is 39% higher than the 2021 figures. All right, it was 1.62 lakh crores in the year 2021. So Pranam here is concerned with the uh, you know reduced usage of chemical fertilizers. So here I listed the features of uh, key features of this scheme. Please go through it. Next in news was INSTC, which stands for the International North-South Transport Corridor. International North-South Transport Corridor. So, it, you know, it is a tripartite uh, project involving India, Iran, and Russia. All right. So, it was initially implemented by these three countries. Uh, that is, uh, during 2000 at the uh, Euro Asian Conference on Transport, India, Iran and Russia, uh, these three countries inked a trilateral agreement that serves as the foundation for INSTC, that is International North-South Transport Corridor. So it is a multimodal transport corridor, which means it includes uh, roadways, railways and uh, waterways. All these, all these three uh, shall be included under this particular project. The basic objective is to the basic objective is to reduce the dependency on Suez Canal. To reduce the dependency on Suez Canal, because a lot of uncertainty exists over the passage of uh, passage through this particular Suez Canal, and as a result, India was looking for some alternate uh, ways that included you no know, supplying of goods through Iran. Right here we have a Chabahar port which was developed from India's support or India's help. To this particular port, India intends to reach out to INSTC, that is uh, India uh, International North South Transport Corridor. All right. Next we have Kushiara Water Treaty. It is between India and Bangladesh. Kushiara is a river or a tributary. Tributary of Barak River. It is a distributary of Barak River which arises in Assam's upland and flows through uh, the state of Assam be before continuing on to Bangladesh. It will then join the Meghna River system. Meghna River system. An agreement was recently signed between India and Bangladesh uh, with respect to the usage of the waters from Kushiara River and before this, in the year 1996, Ganga Water Pact was signed between India and Bangladesh and after nearly uh, a gap of uh, nearly 17, 18 years, once again, a new agreement uh, with respect to sharing of river waters has been signed between India and Bangladesh. 
Next operation Dost was in news. It is a humanitarian and disaster relief operation concerning uh, Turkey and Syria following severe uh, earthquake in Turkey and Syria. So India sent out its air force to you know evacuate people residing Indians or uh, other people residing in these particular countries that is Turkey and Syria. Right. Next. Milgro, uh, Milgromian dynamics was in news. This most famously called as Mond experiment or, or Mond theory, which is about the expansion of galaxies. Basically, I'll give a brief idea. Do not worry about the complexities involved in this particular, uh, you know, uh, what do you call a principle. Just know the basics. It opposes. It opposes the theory proposed by Albert Einstein. Einstein in the year 2015 had proposed the theory of relativity. So this was this has been opposed by this Milgromian dynamics, which, which says that there is nothing called as dark matter in this universe. Dark matter in this universe. Whereas Albert, Albert Einstein's theory of relativity said that there is something called as theory of uh, uh, there is something called as dark matter which exists across the universe, which is holding together the entire universe or the components in the universe very tightly. However, Milgromian dynamics opposes this and says that there is nothing called as dark matter. So this is the basic principle. All right. So what is dark matter? See, the, whatever we, we see, that is uh, the planets, moons or massive galaxies, it just forms 5% of the total universe. Apart from this, nearly 95% of the things in the galaxies cannot be seen. It includes 20%, 27% dark matter and 68% dark energy. And the next question we have is, what is the difference between dark matter and dark energy? See friends, dark matter is that thing which has a great gravitational force or an enormous gravitational force which is holding the universe together. Whereas because of dark energy, the whole universe is expanding, which means dark energy is pushing the components of universe outside, whereas dark matter is pulling the components of the universe inside. So th this is the basic difference between dark matter and dark energy. Please note that the, the amount of dark matter in the universe is less than the amount of dark energy in the universe. All right. Next, GPT was in news. We, we all have heard about chat GPT, right? Chat GPT is not, uh, no big deal. So we all know that uh, uh, chat GPT is an um, artificial intelligence based artificial intelligence artificial intelligence based uh, uh, AI assistant. So so far we had uh, you know the pre previous version. Now the latest version that is chat GPT four or uh, chat GPT three point five was recently released. It is an AI based assistant. So here in the exam uh, the question can be as simple as who is involved in the uh, you know uh, production of chat gpt it is microsoft microsoft so similar kind of soft software is being developed by google and what is it called as it is called as bard these all are ai based assistants if you mean uh, if it means you ask anything they are ready to answer you ask a question they will provide the accurate information up to date information so here gpt stands for generative pre trained transformers generative pre trained transformers the full form of GPT should be remembered. All right. So that was it for today. I hope today's class has been helpful. Thank you for joining. Take care. Have a nice day. Goodbye.